Today on The Joy of Editing, I'll be looking at the new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.5.0. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yeah, another update for Topaz Photo AI. I know they come rolling out every week, but I think it's good because we can keep giving our feedback to Topaz and they keep making this product better and better, tailoring it to each of our needs. So always give them your feedback. It's very important. But we're going to look at this new update version 1.5.0. By the way, this is the interface for Topaz Photo AI. I think it's very nice. It's very clean. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But over here, and I've addressed this in past videos, but I love over here they have help and tips. So you could get access to getting started, you know, import and enhance your first image. So get some information about that. Users, guides, features, plugins, use with other editing software. So a lot of good information you can click on here. So that's nice. And also, you always see your last four images that you've processed in Topaz Photo AI up here, which is really nice. And you can clear that out. So that's a really good feature. And by the way, if you want to send feedback to Topaz, just come up here to help. And then you could come down here to give feedback, click on that, report an issue. So if you're having bug issues, they want to know about it. They're all about it. And then they have a link to support product roadmap, where they're going in the future, release notes, what's new on this new update. So if I click on release notes, it'll take us right here to release notes. And you can see all of the updates here. Here's the latest one, Photo AI 1.5.0. But you could go back and look and see where they've come from. So if we click on this, it's going to give us the release notes for this product here. Uh, they've added a recover original detail slider in there. I'll show that to you. And then you can see all the changes from version 1.4.3. So I highly recommend that you go over there. I'll talk about some of the changes, not all of the changes, but we'll get a look at things today. But I just wanted to point that out. If you don't yet have Topaz Photo AI or any of the Topaz products, I have affiliate links in the description below. It'll take you right over to the Topaz website where you can purchase the products. When you use my link, I make a small commission and that helps me to keep tutorials coming your way. You can also get a free trial and try out Topaz Photo AI and see if it will fit into your workflow. Well, enough of that. Let's get started. The first thing I'll show you has nothing to do with the new update, but I wanted to make this point clear to you. If you click on Browse Images and you select just one image and you open it up in Topaz Photo AI, you notice you don't see its thumbnail down here. Now there's a little, you see the little arrow here, you can click it and there's your thumbnail and you can hover over the thumbnail and get important information here. I'm just going to go ahead and click file and close this image. And now what I want to show you, if you open up two or more images, let's click on browse images and I'll select both of these images and open them up. Now you'll see that the thumbnail automatically opens up for you. So with just one image, it doesn't with two or more, it does. And if you don't see it with the one image, you can just click this arrow right here and then you'll see your thumbnail. So I just wanted to point that out. And by the way, you can close images right here. See the three dots? If you click right here, you can open images from here, close images, show and finder. A lot of good information in here. And then you can apply, you know, autopilot settings, current settings, current settings to also a lot of good things you can do down there. I want to point that out. But for now, I'm going to click and just close this image out because I'm just going to show you one image today. This is not about editing or anything. I'm just going to go over some changes here in version one. 5.0. I closed that image because the first thing I want to show you involves when you bring a new image in and a change that has taken place. And I told you, I think it was the last four images. Actually, it's probably the last six. It might be more, but I think it's only six. And if you'll recall, when you bring an image in, it shows you information down here that it's scanning the image. That's not there anymore. You're going to find it up over here in the panel. So let me click browse images. I'll select this image again and we'll open it up. But watch up here. See where it says scanning image. It all happens up here now. Recovering faces, so on and so forth. So all that information takes place up here. And a little check comes here in a little green circle. Kind of cute, right? This is cool. I really like what they're doing to this interface. It's super clean. 
really laid out nicely. I also like the fact that we can do our cropping, selecting our subject and faces right up here. You can also select your subject inside of the sharpen module and your faces inside of the recovering faces module, but they move crop out of upscaling and just put it up here on top. So this is really nice. The first thing I want to show you here is anything dealing with crop, subject, or faces. Whenever you go to edit a face or a subject or the crop, let's click on crop. I want you to notice something. When I click crop, all these buttons down here are grayed out, fit everything. So you can't do anything. You're just going to see a single image here. And by the way, this is before upscaling. Originally, you were seeing the image upscaled, but right now you're not. So if you'll notice, you can see the pixelation in there, but you could come here and make your crop. I'm just going to cancel out of here. But that's one thing. You can't go and click on these different icons and make any changes. You can only have a single image. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. And now you see we're back up to the upscaled image. And this image is a very small image that I got from unsplash.com. And it's uh, upscaled four times because... Topaz determined that I had a very small image that I brought in here and I have my preferences set up to upscale. And let me show you something new about preferences. If you come up here to Topaz Photo AI and click and click on your preferences and if we go to auto, we're in autopilot right now. We have three categories, general, autopilot, and shortcuts. This was new from the last update, I believe a couple updates back, really nice. But you notice on upscale, I have mine set to enhance small images by default. Autopilot will upscale small image 1.5 to 4 times to a maximum of 12 megapixels. So I have mine set to do that when I bring in smaller images. But if you don't make any changes in here, and by the way, if you do make a change, you have to click save. If you don't make a change, this is new. You don't have to click cancel. You can hover out here anywhere and click with your mouse and that'll go away. So that's a new little thing that's been added. Another new feature deals with removing noise. So right now we're not removing any noise. I'm just going to click on here. And you'll notice you're going to have a new slider in here, Recover Original Detail. So if you feel your image is a bit too soft, you can take this slider and drag it and bring more detail back into the image. And Autopilot will go ahead and readjust. So we have this new Recover Original Detail, which I think is going to be welcome. Now you're only going to find Recover Original Detail when you're using a non-RAW image. In other words, a TIFF, JPEG, whatever, but not for RAW files. Now, I'll show you something else. Uh, let's go ahead and click on faces. And let's say I do not want this face. So I'm going to unselect that face by clicking on it and click apply. So now I'm only going to recover this face here. Now, if you click on crop and you crop your image, and right now it's at original ratio, I'll just put it to custom ratio. And let's say I want to crop the side in like this and this side in. Maybe pull down here in the bottom like that. Notice we get a warning message here. This is new. Editing the crop will rerun autopilot and reset selected faces. So that's important. So right now, if I apply this, you'll recall I only had this face selected. Now you'll notice it's running its uh, autopilot again because I made the crop. But notice when I hover over faces here, they're both selected. So remember that if you do a crop and you have faces selected, you're going to have to readjust and select the faces that you want or don't want. So that's kind of important. So you may want to select your faces last before you do your crop. So right now, if I don't want this face, I can go ahead and click it. And now it will not be selected and click apply. And as you can see, without face recovery, this face looks horrible. And also the printing back here doesn't look so good, but I think we can fix that as well. But face recovery really works and I do need it on this image. So let me go ahead and click on faces and I'll click on this face to select it and click apply. And now that face looks really good. Now remember, this is a tiny image. This image uh, was started out as 640 by 427 pixels so very very small plus i cropped into that it got even smaller and the cool thing is you'll notice after i cropped it it ran autopilot again and now it's removing noise now that we cropped it in it felt we needed noise removal here and again don't forget about this new recovered original detail slider if you need it i'm not going to be playing with it on this image but I just wanted to point that out. Now let's see if we can take care 
of this text back here. Because if we look up in here and up here, it looks a little wonky. And it's all caused by the AI upsizing, but Topaz have taken all these things into consideration. I believe they're the only ones out there that can fix text. I'll click on the preserve text module. We'll open it up. And now we have to select some text. And you notice we, do, we lose all our icons down here. They're grayed out. We can't use them. And the image is very low res now. In other words, this tiny image is not upscaled. Now we have brushes. We have add, subtract, and we have a brush size. We can change our brush size, as you can see right there. Or we could use the shortcut left and right bracket key and increase or decrease the brush size. And by the way, if you want to see your shortcuts, just come up here to Topaz Photo AI, click on Preferences, and click on Shortcuts, and you're going to find all your shortcuts right in here. I didn't make any changes. I don't have to click Save. I could click Cancel. Or I could hover out here. Remember, this is new. Click, and that closes the preferences. And now with a small brush, I'm just going to paint over these letters here, not being too careful. These letters right in here, even these lines like here and here, this line here and here, and paint over here, right down in here, over on this side. Okay, right there. I'll just paint this right there. I think that's good. Let's click apply and see what it does. Wow, look at that. That's pretty darn amazing, I must say. It really does a great job. I'll shut preserving text off by toggling it off. That's what it looks like before. And now it looks like this. But look at that text. What an improvement. I have one final thing, and that deals with tooltips. Several tooltips added to the app. Wording tweaks have been added. Where are they at? Just discover them. Hover over things. When you hover over things like a slider name, like minor denoise, hover over and it tells you what it does minor D blur, and you're going to find sliders. They're all going to give you information. And then inside of each one of these modules, like the AI model, if you hover over the I for information here, you're going to get tons of great information about what all these buttons do, like standard, high fidelity graphics. What are they for? It's going to tell you, and it's going to give you tips as well. And you'll find those in each one of these modules. Here's the AI model here for remove noise, and you can find out about that as well as sharpening, hover over I for information and find out about sharpening. And again, all these sliders hover over the name of the slider and it'll tell you what they're there for, what they do. And then on each one of these modules, hover over the icon to the left and you're gonna get information and tips here as well. Every one of these icons are gonna give you information, but I think this is so cool. You know, I think Topaz are just really a great company and they are really working hard to tailor this product for you and me. And I think that's a really good thing. Let me know what you think about this new update. Let me know in the comment section below. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this first look at Topaz Photo AI version 1.5.0. I really love the way this product is going. I'm really enjoying it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. Share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification about that. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!